What's up, everybody? Ben Askren. Gonna do a Mental Monday for you. And uh, I've been doing Mental Mondays for Rudis for about a year now. And I finally, finally, finally talked them into letting me go live. I used to go live, you guys remember, all the way back on my AWA page uh, when I did the Mental Mondays. And I enjoyed it because I would get feedback from you guys, bounce off stuff of you guys. And so now... Um, we had been filming the Mental Mondays for the last year or so, and now we decided to stream them live. So that's fantastic. So what I was tasked to talk about this week is very, very pertinent, and that is how to deal with failure or and or losses, obviously. And so I would say, as a wrestler, this is one of the most critical aspects that, that you can have. And I'll tell you where it goes really 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 uh well expect you know where where i see it the most is at the college level at the college level people are successful or not successful uh pretty much based on whether they can handle failure or not so if kids go to college because most time a kid goes to college he's had at least some level of success in In high school, right? Maybe a state champ, maybe a state placer. Either way, they had some success. And then when they go to college, obviously they're in a room with a lot of other really, really, really similar level people. And what they find is that they're losing much more frequently than whenever they were in high school or their previous room. And a lot of kids can't deal with it. I can't tell you how many people I've seen go into a college room and can't deal with having the struggles that they never had in high school and they just on a daily basis they can't they can't deal with it and they just quit right they they can't come back so um obviously i am dealing with a huge loss in in my career and it's not it's not the first time right obviously i lost my first high school title i lost my first two national titles lost at the olympics i lost at multiple world team trials and the u.s open and uh, so I guess I guess what I would say is obviously at some point all of us are done with our competitive careers at some point. And so, you know, when I think of a guy, say like Drew Foster would be a great example for me. And you know, he was never a high school state champion. So a lot of people said, ah, he's a failure. Oh, he's not very good. And then when he got to college, he was he was all right, but he's not you know, not doing great. And he, and then, you know, all the way by senior, he ends up winning a national title and he's never won a high school state title before in his life. And so it's like, okay, if you look at it, if you look at it like this, he was uh, a failure, 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 failure. But then at the end, he was a success. So does it really matter that he was failing all of those times as long as at the end of the day, um, he had success, right? And we don't know. We don't know what success means all the time. Obviously, in his case, it was a national title, um, but it's not. It's not always a national. Title. It could be. There's there's a lot of definitions of success, and so we talked about from a college perspective. We talked about the amount of perseverance that's necessary to go into a college room every single day and keep the same level of motivation and keep the same drive to keep trying hard, even though you're probably getting uh, beat on here. If you want to type in a question, you can type in a question, uh, Kincaid. Feel free to type in the question. Um, so, so either way, uh, and like I said, like my say my first high school state title, or say my second two now, my first and second national title where I lost both of them. It's like, yeah, I, I failed that day. There's absolutely no doubt whatsoever that I failed on those days. But what was you know, then when the next year I win a state title or the next two years I win college and national titles, it's like, well, those successes became became because I learned from those failures. So for me, um, I, I guess, no, so if I have to wrap this up, I would say, Chase, what's up? Are you coming back to Funky Fresh Camp this year? I would say for me, for my high school state title, my first two national titles, which I lost, and then obviously the Olympics because I never got another shot. Those are my three biggest failures in life. Um, and so, uh, sorry you distracted me, Chase. So I, w- I was saying, if I want to wrap all this up, number one, if you are, I would not base my success or failure based on the W's or L's, right? And that's like, for example, what I tell my kids, the only thing I'm really expecting you out of, out of you today is that you try your hardest. If you try your hardest, and we keep trying our hardest over and over and over again, eventually we're gonna get good results. That's on me as a coach. If you're giving me great effort to eventually get great results out of you. 
Awesome, Creed. I'll see you at Funky Fresh. Um, so that that's number one. Don't don't judge success and failure based on W's or L's, right? There's there's a lot more to it, especially over the long term. Um, and, and then the other thing I would say is have enough perseverance to keep coming back over and over and over and over again. Uh, because, you know, I pointed out Drew Foster. I could point out many, 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 many other people. Obviously, even, you know, myself. Actually, I was talking to John. I talked to John. I sat down to John Smith. I was hoping to talk to him about Dayton Fix and how many failures Dayton Fix had at the beginning of his career before he became so high level. So I think the only person I've ever never, never been able to find out who had a huge amount of failures <laughs> before their successes was Kyle Snyder. Um, but I, I'm going to dig, keep digging a little deeper on him because I'm sure there was some failure or struggle somewhere in there. Uh, before he started having all successes. But for me, for other people, um, the failure always comes before the successes you learn from the failures, and then uh, you get better. So that's that. I hope you guys learned something from that. I, uh, I'm i happy to be going live again. I, th- I thought that that was uh, nice that Rudis let me go live. I think it goes a little better this way. I like taking your questions. Uh, how do I deal with social media records? <laughs> I ignore them. Well, when, maybe when they're going my way, I'll, I'll listen to them. And when they're not going my way, I definitely ignore them. So uh, that's all I got for you guys today. Keep checking out the Rudest Mental Mondays. And then Matt and I are podcasting, I think it's tomorrow, I believe. And uh, and then we got Fargo later this week. So we'll be doing a whole bunch of stuff there. Peace. See ya.